Are your genealogy files unorganized? Is your family history a little bit scattered? You've got slips of paper everywhere. You've got records and files here, there, and everywhere. So today we are talking about getting your genealogy files in order and get them organized. Being organized with your family history is key to finding the answers quickly and resolving brick walls and finding the answers to your genealogy research questions. Most importantly, being organized well, it can create an accurate family history tree so that you're not barking up the wrong genealogy family tree, right? So why do you need to be organized? Well, quite honestly, if you're not organized, you're wasting time trying to dig around for those files. You lose your focus. You find yourself going down rabbit holes because you're finding other stuff and you go, oh, I forgot about that piece of paper, right? And it helps us stay focused on that research question. When you're in that research zone, when you're thinking about the, the research question and, and you're in the zone, being organized is so beneficial because what happens then is when you're in the zone and you're like focused on one research question and one ancestor, or maybe the cluster of that, that family group, when you're organized, all of those records and all of those details are at your fingertips. So we need to keep organized and we're going to talk about that a lot today, okay? So we can talk about paper files. Let's start there. A lot of people have paper files, as do I. And so what I recommend you do is you keep those paper files organized by surname and then maybe by surname within the surname folders or surname notebooks. You might keep them by ancestor. Now I do the exact same process with my digital files and I take all of that information, those photos, those videos, those artifacts, those research notes and all of those slips of paper that we get from the library. Like you know when you're at the library and you go up to the reference desk and you find a book and you write it down, you get this little slip of paper. How many of you have tons of those little slips of paper? Little reference notes or little comments in a notebook or a three ring binder, some sort of uh, paper file, we're going to get all of that digitized. We need to get all of that organized and we need to start grouping that stuff by surname. We need to scan all of those documents and we need to kind of get out of the paper business. Now we don't want to throw away documents that are valuable, but once we take those little slips of paper where we wrote something at the library and then we put it into our research notes, we can throw those little slips of paper away. I mean, if we have a good quality set of research notes, filed properly and maybe a backup somewhere so that we don't lose that information, then we can throw away all those little slips of paper. Don't throw away your documents, but just those little slips of paper where we made notes at the library or at the archives or wherever. Or even what I do is I scan some of that stuff. Like if I went to a family reunion or met up with a grandfather or something and I took a bunch of notes or somebody took notes on my behalf, then what I do is I go and I scan that, I scan my notes, like literally with a scanner, scan my notes. And then if, if I don't feel like there's anything, you know, super important, like somebody's signature on something, or then I'll toss those notes because I have a digital copy, I have a digital backup, I have put that stuff in my research notes, and I have put it up maybe on the cloud somewhere on Ancestry or some other place. With that, we are starting to get organized. So here's what I suggest you do. I challenge you to pick one ancestor and get him or her organized. One, just start with one. Learn the skills to organize. And once you learn this with one ancestor, as you're starting to do your research, you can continue to do these skills over and over again with each ancestor you're working on. Don't feel like you need to go and like clean out the whole closets and the archives and do everything and get everything organized before you do the research because you'll never get to your research. <laughs> but a lot of times we have an idea where things are. And so we could pull out those things that we know for that one ancestor, we know where they are, we want to scan them. We want to transcribe them. We want to abstract the transcription. So that means pulling out all the juicy goodness out of it and leaving all the boilerplate stuff behind, like a will, for example. You know, I, Connie Knox, being a sound mind and body, this is my last will and testament. The only thing in that sentence is Connie Knox, right? So we can get rid of all of the boilerplate stuff in a will. So that's the abstracted part. We take the abstracted part and we put it into our research notes. 
we keep our research notes in chronological order. So now we have a digital file of our research notes. And we start, and this is a living, breathing document, right? Your research notes are constantly being updated. I do not share my research notes online because that puts a timestamp on it and it's constantly being updated and I'd have to constantly be, and people would download that. I don't wanna do that because my research notes are constantly being worked on. And by the way, I may have put a hypothesis that I'm not sure about in my research notes. And I may have made a note in there going, I think that this connection is this connection. And if somebody takes that for gospel, if I put it on Ancestry and they, and they think that's the way it should be, then I don't want them making assumptions based on something that I had a hypothesis about. So what I do then, I take those research notes and I keep them in a digital file. Make sure you have a cloud backup somewhere outside of your house. Heaven forbid your house burns down. So I keep a backup on my computer and a second drive at home. And then I also have, a, you know, like a Dropbox and a Google Drive and all, you know, and Ancestry as well. But my research notes are on a private drive in the cloud. Okay. And so when we do that, we've got our files now organized by surname. And then within that, we've got surname and ancestor's name and those folders. And then within the folders, we've got all of our documents and our research notes. Now, this method really works. It will help you solve your family history mysteries. Why? Because when you start going through every document you have for one ancestor, one research question, and you start putting that stuff into your research notes, you transcribe everything, and you abstract everything, and you put it in your research notes, you will start to see things fall into place that you never noticed before. And so by doing that, you now have a clean document. And by the way, your research notes might actually become a chapter in a future book, or at least information from which you can glean from. Don't forget to put your source citations in there as well, so that you know that every paragraph that you put in there, you know, it starts with a date and it's like, what is it? It's a birth certificate or whatever. And then a little bit of information about the birth certificate and who's in it. And then the source citation, you can do that in footnotes. And the reason why we want to do that is because I don't know about you, but I've been doing this for 45 years. I go back to something that I did 20 years ago and I go, where on earth did I get that from? How do I know that that person was born at that time? I put it in my research notes, so I must've gotten it from somewhere, but where did I get it from? If I have the source citations in the footnotes, then I know. So by getting this method going and really kind of just working on whoever it is that you're most interested in, you get this method going of pulling out the records, transcribing them, abstracting them, putting them in your research notes, and then working what's missing, right? Because you're gonna have documents, things are gonna pop up. Wait a minute, holy cow. There might be, I've got a marriage certificate. There might be a marriage announcement in the newspaper. Let me go look in the newspapers. Or uh, you know, same thing with a death, right? You might have a death certificate. Let's go look in the newspapers for an obituary or vice versa. You got an obituary, let's go look for the death certificate, right? So all of this kind of stuff will start you thinking and now you're in the zone, right? You're in the zone and you're thinking about the, the research question. You're thinking about the possibilities. You're digging in to the juicy details of that one ancestor. Now we talk a lot about this over at the Academy and, and in fact, next week, we're gonna be talking in detail about how to keep research notes, how to do your files, you know, a little bit more about the, the transcription and abstract stuff. We're gonna be talking about this stuff at the Academy next week. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you are signed up with the Genealogy TV Academy at uh, genealogytv.org. I think you will find that this challenge for you let me know in the comments if you take on the challenge, right? One ancestor, one research question. Who is it that you're looking for and where and when did they live? And go through that process, pull out the records, scan them, abstract them, put them in your research notes and work what's missing and you'll start, things will start to fall into place. Let me hear your success stories in the comments below. I'd really love to hear about it. All right, until next time, we'll see you in these other videos.